Good morning, Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Sunday, the 13th of August, 2017. Tropics are starting to get busy again in terms of areas to watch over the next several days that could be of concern to some folks, maybe a lot of folks. First of all, let's take a look at what we have going on in the National Hurricane Center Outlook map. Of course, we have Tropical Depression 8, and it is fairly weak overall, still forecast to become a tropical storm. We'll look at that in more detail in a moment. And now we have this area, officially Invest Area 91L, just off the coast of Africa. Remember, the numbers go from 90 through 99, and the letter L for Atlantic for numbering these systems and identifying them as areas of further investigation or more interest, however you want to slice it. So looking at Tropical Depression 8, it is forecast to become a tropical storm and move very comfortably, I guess you could say, between Bermuda and Cape Hatteras. It doesn't get any more evenly split than that. Perfect field goal right through the uprights at that point. Uh, and it is forecast to become a tropical storm later today and through the next several days becoming post-tropical perhaps up here in the open Atlantic, the North Atlantic. So this will add maybe one or two additional ace points and of course it'll burn another name so to speak and the name would be Gert, G-E-R-T, short for Gertrude I would think and really the only impact from this will eventually be some increased swells that head towards the uh, United States and maybe Bermuda over here and I guess they could emanate southward as well and eventually impact portions of the Greater Antilles but we can look at that after and assuming it becomes a tropical storm to generate enough wind over the ocean to create those swells in the first place so maybe another day or so before we look at that because you surfers out there I know that you might be looking for some action, and this might help at least a little bit, but we have to be mindful of the fact that this could also generate um, rip currents, right? And that could be a problem. So looking out at the satellite picture this morning, here is TD number 8. You know, it was Invest Area 99L, traveled all the way across, and never really got going. It took a while. And here it is, though, developing in the uh, southwest Atlantic the southwest portion of the North Atlantic Basin to be specific and uh, the flow up here is just uh, still westerly uh, from southwest to northeast for the most part this uh, trough parked over the east coast and that's going to steer this comfortably like I said before between Bermuda and North Carolina um, pretty good banding associated with it decent outflow uh, over on the east side and you know, even a little bit of a channel there. So it's got the makings of becoming a tropical storm, and it'll probably do so. In the meantime, we have uh, interest now out here, not so much into the satellite picture on this one, uh, this perspective anyway, just yet. But right here off the coast of Africa, this is going to have a lot of people talking over the next several days uh, because the model consensus is really starting to grow with this feature and if it does not produce then something is definitely wrong <clears throat> with the weather because man you just can't see much more in, in, in terms of favorability and the signs from the models and just all kinds of things coming together that I think that the era of false alarms from the GFS and even the Euro has had some issues uh, with overdoing things. I think that is coming to an end. Uh, I don't know for sure. Uh, you know, I'm going to, of course I don't, but it certainly seems that way. So this is 91L out here and uh, this is about 10 days away from any potential impacts to the US if it were to do so. But first, we got to make sure our friends here in the islands, and that includes Barbados, of course, what's going to happen there. So we're going to be watching this very closely over the next few days. The intensity guidance for this system, let me get some water real quick. All right. Been up late. 
of course, the late nights are going to start. Uh, the intensity guidance indicating that this will steadily strengthen over time, and uh, there's really not any good early spaghetti model plots from your hurricane models just yet. In fact, I checked, and they were still, for 91L, uh, for some reason stuck on something up in the North Atlantic, uh, like northwest of the coast of Africa. It was weird. So we'll wait until another day or so goes by, but I wanted to show you that the overall envelope of the intensity guidance here is up, uh, and that indicates favorable conditions. The vorticity signature with this system, not very prevalent just yet, is starting to gather here, and you know how I like to do things. We will track this over the coming days to see when and if it starts to become more bundled, focusing that energy from this tropical wave and doing something with it. And uh, this is just the beginning, so we'll, we'll watch this incipient feature as it comes off of Africa totally and begins to encounter those favorable conditions. Uh, very large amplitude tropical wave here. Talk about an S symbol. My goodness. Uh, wait till you see this in the precipitable water animation. Holy cow. And then, so, so yeah, you got a lot of Saharan air punched out here, but then look, I mean, it is just as clear as it could be all the way up here to 20 degrees north latitude. Uh, and that's important because now the alleyway is going to be clear for this to develop without much in the way of dry air. And that's just another sign that this is probably going to go. So looking at the total precipitable water, first of all, you wonder why they call it a tropical wave? <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of part of it. I mean, that looks like a wave. So it's this wave of energy, this wave of low pressure embedded within the easterly flow, and that really defines it right there for you, doesn't it? Pretty good uh, rotation with this system overall. It's dry because it does have the Saharan air layer fully enveloped within it. Uh, but this is going to continue west as well. You never know. Does it try to go somewhere over here? More than likely ending up in the eastern Pacific. But, you just, I mean, that is, that is a heck of an amplitude in the wave feature there. And then this is the moisture signature associated with TD8. And then this is the just ridiculous flow of moisture that has plagued, especially the southeast, raining day after day after day. We've heard of the flooding concerns, not only concerns, but the real-life issues that have taken place in the New Orleans area. And this whole mess at one point even dropped back towards southeast Texas. We had that Vortmax that came through San Antonio, flooded Houston, and all of this has just been semi-permanent over the last several days. But it's getting ready to lift out, I do believe, and that's going to have implications on a lot of things. And we're going to address that over the coming days, uh, starting tomorrow, as we get more data. But this is the setup now. Watch how things change over time. Speaking of that, this is the GFS. So let's take a look at the different models here. So this is the overnight run, the 0Z run last night, initial conditions. And just to get everybody familiar with what we're looking at, Here's the east coast of North America. That would be uh, the Carolina coast there, Florida, etc., around through the Yucatan and Central America, the north coast of South America. And here's the west coast of Africa over here. And then here's our uh, Arab Barbados, Puerto Rico, and the rest of the Lesser Antilles. So if we put this into motion, of course, if I move the map, we'll just do this, and then we'll scroll it back down. <laughs> Pretty clever, eh? So put this into motion, and you watch right out through here. This drawing tool, by the way, is fantastic. Uh, you see our energy associated with 91L, and it goes on, and it develops rather quickly, staying fairly far to the south overall. Uh, this is 20 degrees north latitude, cutting right through here. So it stays south of 20 degrees out for the next five days, uh, south of a pretty stout area of high pressure out here. And you notice though as it starts over again, it looks like two different areas of energy, two Vortmax regions get together 
Um, so it may be a funky initialization. It's hard to say, but it, I don't think it's going to matter much. I do believe that this is going to develop. And I'm going to get rid of the telestration since you seem, hopefully by now you, you know what's what and where is where. So let's just speed it up a little bit more and then we can draw on it again. So there it is in the initial stages. It goes on to develop. There's TD8 rounding the ridge itself. And then, like I said, at the end of the five days, you know, it looks like it really does develop fairly significantly. Maybe a tropical storm by then in this model, the GFS model. Uh, and we're looking again at the 5,000 foot vorticity signature. Uh, and it's round. You know, you see all these different things that I look for. And there they are. And you also can see, again, the shape of this ridge out here. It's broken here as TD8 goes around it. But then it starts to expand more to the west. You see it gets bigger and bigger over time. And that is problematic. I mean, it really is. We're going to have to watch how that evolves over the next week to 10 days. It has a lot of implications on more than you can imagine. And we're going to just wait and talk about that more tomorrow. The European model. Finally, we at least have some consensus an agreement amongst the models. This is the initial conditions. Levi Cowan, TropicalTidbits.com, creating this map and series of maps that I'm going to show you here. Uh, so here's TD8 at the initial, and this is the same time frame. Initialize at 0Z last night, and this is also the 850 millibar vorticity. That's just a different color bar system. And then here, now there's some energy there, but this is the energy we're going to be watching over here. They're not going to match up exactly, but at least you see over time, 24, there's 48, and then here's 72 hours. And you notice out here, uh, energy starting to come together. This is TD8, soon to be GERT, presumably. And if we go out to 96 hours, and then finally day 5, um, whereas the GFS has something a little farther to the west, the Euro definitely has something there in the deep tropics, and more energy comes off after that. If you go and watch, you know, and look at the, you can look at this stuff out to 10 days if you want to, but that's so far out in time. I always pick five days, seven days once in a while. But that's if I'm concerned about something and we're looking for trends in the pattern and we're not quite there yet. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. But the bottom line is these pieces of energy are going to roll off of Africa. They're going to move west over time. And it's going to be time to start watching them. Uh, and, you know, we've been talking about it, that it's coming. And it's coming a little bit early. Normally, you know, around the 20th of August is when I consider the meat of the hurricane season to really begin. So this will be a few days earlier than that, it does appear. And to add even more intrigue, this is from Dr. Ryan Maui. He posted this on Twitter. So I wanted to share it with you, and you see this is the EPS, the ECMWF cyclone locations, and these are all the different members, the tracks, development farther to the west, so it stays kind of innocuous until then, and then there are a lot of westward tracks in here. And, you know, this is not to be taken as what will happen. This is showing you very prevalently the outline of the ridge over the eastern Atlantic extending over to the western Atlantic with the Bermuda Azores high and you know in some instances you could infer that it's even stronger with these more southern and westward tracks so these are the things as he mentioned in his Twitter post and I'm going to show you that right here these are the things that we need to watch uh, he says definitely a possible US mainland problem I don't know if I would have said definitely, but that's just me. Uh, he says, westward track concern. And you can see that in the modeling here. So that's what we need to take away from this. That, uh, you know, he says, these spaghetti tracks are just scenarios, and they help forecasters focus time and effort on understanding the various flow plat patterns when clustered. Right? So these are the things we need to glean from this early on. So we shall. We shall do lots of gleaning over the next few days for sure. All right, so today is the 13th anniversary of Hurricane Charlie, Category 4 hurricane that hit the southwest coast of Florida 
August 13th, 2004. I was there with my crew, my team, uh, and there was four of us down there. And some of you have probably already seen the video, but, you know, like with any great movie, <laughs> you see it again. So today at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, I just chose an arbitrary, figured that's as good a time as any, I am going to play the video uh, from our 2004 DVD. Uh, I'm going to do like the opening sequence to the DVD just to kind of set the stage, and then I'll skip ahead and we will play the Charlie chapter, so to speak. And uh, that's going to be on YouTube Live, 5 o'clock today. And, of course, the chat will be up, and we can chat during, so it's kind of like live commentary, if you will. But I'm not going to be talking and ruin it, but we can chat. And then when it's over, when the Charlie chapter finishes, I will stick around for a little bit, and we can do some Q&A. You know? And really, we need to just focus on the Charlie thing, not so much what's going to happen in the tropics. That's covered in this update. So I'm not going to not answer any questions about... 91L or whatever, but we're going to focus mainly on Charlie. You know, if you go and you see a classic film or any film uh, with Q&A, you don't ask about something else unrelated. So try to stick to the, uh, hey, it's the 13th anniversary of a major, major event in weather history, and uh, we want to be able to chat about that. So 5 o'clock Eastern, and if you can't tune in, it will be archived on YouTube for later viewing. All right, so we're going to have a lot to keep up with over the next several days, but that's no surprise if you've been watching these videos and paying attention to what other people have, say, have been saying. Here it comes, apparently. Have a great rest of your Sunday with that tidbit of information. I'm Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll see you later today, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, as we revisit Hurricane Charlie.